Praise the living God. Now, the biggest problem with the church generally is because is the issue, the issue of not knowing what exactly it is that you did that has brought your breakthrough. And that's a problem with a large percentage of the church. So a person will tithe, will sow, will fast fruit, will fast. And after a period of time when the breakthrough comes, they're not even, they don't even know which one. Maybe it's a combination of both, but you don't know. And you see, it's the lack of understanding that often causes the issue. Because when witches do their things, they don't do them, I'm going to put in quotes, by faith, eh? um, with ignorance. <laughs> they do them knowing exactly what to do. That if I do this, it will yield this result. The Christian treats church like it's a secondary school. Cram, pass, and forget. Eh? So the moment you've done something and it has yielded your result, as long as that problem is sorted, you will forget about that until the next problem shows up. And so because you're unaware, you are incapable. You're actually capable, but because you've made yourself incapable of knowing what to do in what circumstance, you, you find yourself almost on a desert island wondering what should I do. So some people, their first resort is run to man of God. They've been attending church since they were in <laughs> Sunday school. They've heard all the scriptures they can hear. Rarely do they hear new things depending on where they go to, to fellowship. Because the way the, 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 the kingdom of God works is that you will hear the same thing. It has a new grace. Okay? <laughs> but rarely. And so someone will hear constantly about certain things but not know the mechanism by which when they're in a situation what they can do. So people gamble. You gamble. You go, you sow. You, know, you go, you, <laughs> you go through a fasting for one week. You say, now I'm doing Daniel fast. And I was telling a few people yesterday, I have to teach on fasting because my perception on fasting is, is totally different from what most people uh, <laughs> know. But we shall talk about that at some point. Eh? So people guess. The child of God guesses. He does a lot of guessing. And in that guessing, um, you can tap on, upon a principle and it works for you. And you come and testify glory to God. But if I told you to replicate a thing at will, are you able to do it? You see, <laughs> there are people who have walked up to me and asked if they are cursed. And some of you might not walk up to a man of God, but you think about it. <laughs> eh, over someone cast me. You know, Psalms chapter 13 and verse 1, I want you to realize that you're not the first one eh, to complain. Eh? He said, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? I'm glad it's in the Bible. How long will you hide your face from me? How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? David was in that situation. So you're not alone, oh. And here's the thing. Let me shock you. Let me shock you. <laughs> Revelations chapter 6. Eh? The Bible talks about a group of guys that are under the throne of God. And they cry, how long, O oh Lord? They're in the heavens. Can you give me that script? Revelation chapter 6. Eh? <laughs> Just in case you think it's only for this. <laughs> for this realm. Okay. It says, and they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O oh Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Now, how does this fit in with, Oh, once we have left this earth, all things are forgotten. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Eh? All is forgotten. We can move on. Swim in the river of life. And every tear wiped away. There's a stage when the tears are wiped away. But here, John is in the spirit. And a group of people who left are crying how long. And just to make it clear, their posture is vengeance. Their posture is what? In other words, some guy did something to them on earth. They have transitioned. They are under the throne of God. Please understand, not hell. Eh? You go and read the scripture. And they are, they are on God's case. How long? 
Because yes, I've transitioned, but there's that chaff. When will you judge and avenge our blood? And this group of people, according to scripture, they were saints that were murdered. They were killed. And so they've transitioned. Now, on another day, I'll explain to you. It's actually a certain dimension of heaven. Eh? Not all dimensions are like this. It's a particular place where people still remember. Okay. <laughs> now, someone walked up to me. I'm just trying to show you that people say how long. Eh? You're not the only one. Eh? But someone walks up to me and says, Rabbi, am I cast? Do I have... <laughs> Did someone put something on me? Now, let me explain something briefly. Eh? That curses and blessings are actually garments that people wear. If you looked at a person with your physical eyes, you would not be able to know who is cursed and who is blessed. The way we know who is cursed and who is blessed is by the result. Okay? So you can't look at someone and just say, this one is cursed, this one is blessed. You know by the result. Now what kind of result? When a person, you know the, the law on life is this, that if you sow in fertile ground, you must reap. If a person sows in fertile ground and they don't reap, that is abnormal. They could be a curse playing a role. Because the aim of a curse is to establish failure at any level. That's what a curse does. Now a blessing is to establish favor and success at any level. So one of the ways you can tell is by the result. So someone will go while others are planting in fertile ground and they reap. This person plants in fertile ground and nothing comes forth. Another person, when they are blessed, will go to a dry and barren land where others are trying to put something and it's not working and they will still reap. The Bible says in Genesis 26 of Isaac that he sowed and reaped a hundredfold and the land where he was was dry and barren. That is the blessing where it overlooks the current status quo and gives a different result. Now the curse does the opposite, the blessing does the other, the other thing. But they are garments. You can't, you can't look at someone physically and know that this person is cursed or blessed. You look at the result. Now, not all results that seem to be negative are a result of a curse. And not all results that seem to be positive are a result of a blessing. Can I give you an example? Okay. According to scripture, um, there's a, the wife of David in 2 Samuel rebuked David for dancing naked. And the Bible says that she was unable to give birth after that until the day she died. That's a curse. So her barrenness was because of a curse. But Sarah and Hannah were barren. It was not a curse. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The scripture says the ground was cursed and he said you shall toil. And so sweating by virtue of that is some sort of a curse on the ground. But Jacob toiled for his wife. <laughs> seven years and another seven for the one that he loved. That was not a curse. I'm trying to show you that two people from the physical can have the same similar result. One is a curse, one is not. So you can't just determine a curse by virtue of the result only. You must discern. Now, another thing is this. That when God is dealing with curses, he doesn't deal with curses the way a lot of religious men deal with curses. Now, there is a dimension of curses that need to be dealt with a particular way. But, everyone or anyone who perceives their cast and it's, it's authenticated that indeed they are. Depending on who you go to, there are people whose perception of dealing with a cast is long hours of I bind, I cast out, I remove. But God's 
response to a curse, when God is dealing with it directly, is to bless. You understand? Not come out, did it, did it, did. That has its place. But when there's some, there are kinds of curses that when they're upon a person, it's not for prayer, fasting, just put a blessing. <laughs> and the blessing nullifies the curse. The Bible says in Genesis 49 that Reuben, because of sleeping with his father's uh, concubine, huh, was cursed by Jacob. He said, your men shall be few. In Deuteronomy 33 verse 6, Moses comes years later and speaks to Reuben. He doesn't address the curse. He plants a blessing. Let Reuben live and not die. No, let his men be few. He doesn't go through now. They cast you and remove that curse. Just blessed. And the blessing rested upon him and removed the curse. Remember Jabez? Born into a curse. Says, oh Lord, that you would bless me. God blesses him. And the good thing goes. But you need to understand how certain things operate. Now, I've met people with demons. I've seen demons in people. I've told you a story of I went somewhere in Tanzania. A girl through three guys. She became mask. You know, <laughs> let me just leave here. She threw three men, grown men. I tried to go in, she kicked me, I left. <laughs> eh! <laughs> now, I've seen that and I understand that there are when you're dealing with, with, with a possession, you have to cast out. But not all curses have to do with possessions. There are curses in places, there are curses on objects, there are curses on people as garments. And if it's a garment, it is changed by a blessing. Now, blessings can happen a number of ways. There are blessings that happen by virtue of activity. The Bible says you shall be blessed when you go in, blessed when you go out. There's no person involved in that process. You're just blessed when you go in and blessed when you go out. Okay? You're blessed in the field. Blessed in, you know, there's that kind of blessing where it says, it says, it says if you pay your tithe, I shall open up windows of blessing. So there are blessings that are attached to activities. Then there are blessings that are not attached to an activity. They are pronounced. They are what? Pronounced. In other words, you meet someone, looks at you and says, now I speak over your life. It's not an activity thing. Are you with me? And when they speak, they remove the gukas or the delay or whatever it is. And you see the people of the Bible knew and understood this process. They understood that I can be blessed by activity. But you know it's a higher realm to be blessed by someone when they speak. It's a higher realm. That's why men looked for it. Okay, let me give you an example. The Bible says that uh, Isaac placed his hands on Jacob, pronounced a blessing. Jacob lives with the blessing. He's blessed. Laban says, because of you, Jacob, I have been blessed. But then Jacob finds an angel and says, bless me. I thought you were already. He understands there are individuals you meet that when they are pronounced, there are dimensions and levels of blessing. Abraham was already blessed by God. God had promised him. Given him a promise, he was already blessed. But when he meets Melchizedek, he wants a blessing. And I need you to understand, you can never run out of wanting blessing. You understand? Add, 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 Lord, add. So there are dimensions of blessings and they're spoken upon a person. A person can dress up in it. When you're blessed, the scripture says, a man called Balaam tried to cast Israel. What was God's response? You cannot cast that which is blessed. In other words, it's like a buffer. Hmm? A buffer where your hands, wherever your hands touch, things multiply. The scriptures say that um, when you sow in fertile ground, Mark chapter 4, Jesus is speaking. He says, you reap 30 60 a hundredfold. There's that blessing. Where you sow in a fertile ground and you're reaping on those levels. But I want you to understand that scripture also says, Deuteronomy 1.11, take me there, that beyond the a hundred, there's what they call an a thousandfold. Mashe. The, may the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous. Now you need to understand that if you stop at a hundred, glory to God, but there are higher dimensions. There's always higher that there's such a thing as a thousandfold blessing when it rests upon a person. They apply for a job, they get. Even though they're not qualified, 
They apply for a visa, they get. When they say no to this man, another one, just as good, shows, I just have a on it. What is this that is upon a person? <laughs> and the blessing is resting upon a person. Now, I noticed something. So, I'm trying to expel some kinds of mindsets. That is not always that you're cast. In fact, a large percentage of Christians going through any form of delay is not because they are cast. A large percentage. I've met people who are cast. I've met. I've met people who are cast. But a large percentage is not because of the curse. And it's a number of reasons. And one time I taught you a while back and I explained that God in his mercy has understood that there are two types, actually three types of testimony. There's a testimony that, that comes as a result of God showing up in due season. You went through something and went through it and that season ended and a new season comes. He told, what did he tell Abraham? He said, by this time next year, you shall have a child. In other words, the good season has ended. And you know, the thing is this, eh? God blessed Abraham in that moment. He spoke the blessing upon Abraham. What did they want? A child. God speaks the blessing and says, by this time next year. But for the whole year, okay, for part of that year, Imagine God leaves from the point he has said it. She's still barren. Because as you know, it doesn't take a year for a child. She's still barren. So if before it was an issue of something she had done, if she's barren now, it's not because of the issue. Because God has blessed the blessing. Has placed the blessing. So now she's barren and the only thing keeping her from giving birth is timing. So someone will come and try to remove the curse. It's not there anymore if it's a curse. For Sarah it was not. Not there anymore. God speaks and in due season it comes. There's a blessing like that. That comes in due season. That your time of deliverance has come. And let me tell you something about times of deliverance. When they show up, it's your day of visitation that devil can do nothing. And you see, I've seen people with testimonies that are unbelievable. One, two, three, four years, five years, things are tight. Then one day, it's like something has opened up in the spirit. I applied for a job. Probably good news. I've got a job. I applied for scholarship. Oh, I've also... now, now the problem is which one do I choose? Before there was absolute luck. Now the season has come. So there's a blessing like that. Then there's a blessing that is irrespective. There's a visitation that is irrespective of season. In other words, your season might not have come, but you can unction it. You say, Lord, it is not my season, but visit me now. <laughs> hey! There's a testimony like that where it was something was done to qualify you before your season. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, sometimes people go through things for a period of time because of the power in how long it took for the testimony to come to pass. That Sarah has been barren for so long that we remember her child because of the length and the time. And I've told you before that Mary doesn't know that testimony. Mary doesn't know it. She doesn't know what it means to wait. <laughs> but her testimony is different in that an angel comes and says, even though it's not yet your time, you're still a virgin. <laughs> we speak. And the seed is planted before the man does his thing. <laughs> you understand? Eh? So she has her own testimony. Then there is what you call the testimony of God. And for another day, we shall explain that. Where, when something is done for a person, <laughs> God testifies. That's a, a, a different thing altogether. So, so you go through things and, and <laughs> think, am I cast? Is something happening to me. You know the thing is, I told you there could be a curse in a place. That one is easy to deal with. Just leave the place. Yes? Yeah. We tell you um, where you're staying is a curse. Don't even waste time. That night, just... Now some people want, now I speak to this place, park, and leave. Isn't that easier? Less stress. Eh? Hmm. Then, there could be a curse in an object. That's very easy. Just let go of the object. <laughs> 
<laughs> because some objects actually carry uh, certain things. Then there are curses that are garments upon people. Now, if it's someone and you can do without them, just. <laughs> I said, we've been friends for long. I just wanted to say, it's nice knowing you. <laughs> Understand? But now, if it is upon you, eh? it is upon you, which is highly unlikely, but if it is upon you, because there are people like that, there are things that men do to remove certain things upon their lives. I told you what you need is a blessing. That when we say from now on, a door is open for you. That how you receive it changes the atmosphere. Let me tell you. Um, this week, I met someone, a lady, she came to me. She came to me the other week. And she explained to me her life and told me that from the time she was around 12 years old, um, a man has been coming in her dreams and sleeping with her. Now, I listened to the story. I listened, I listened, I listened. Then after a while, we were able to diagnose where it came from. And I explained to this lady, I told her, I want you to go and fast for one week. Come back the next week. I want you to go and fast. And she interrupted me and said, man of God, all these years I've been fasting. I've gone to many men of God even now when I was coming to see you. Like fasting is part of what? Then I told her, I have heard you. Now, go and fast for the week. Now, and I was sharing with some guys yesterday that when you do an activity and you do it absent of revelation and I'll explain <laughs> revelation in a moment, eh? we can be mechanical. You know that thing where you're doing something and you don't even know why you're doing it. Maybe you're genuinely doing it because it's a biblical thing. But it might not even be the thing you're supposed to do concerning your issue. Oh, children of God, children of God. And so anyway, she fasted. Now, she was right. She had picked it. But I was telling some guys yesterday that there was a difference between the fasting by instruction and the one where she was like, again, the fasting. I'm going to fast. And I explained to them that there are three types of fasting. And I'll teach this when I explain at some point. That there's a lead fast. A lead fast is when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you and leads you into fasting. It's not your decision. The Bible says Jesus was led into the wilderness. He was fasting. It's a lead fast. A lead fast has a grace upon it. When God tells you now, fast, there's a strength. In your weakness, his strength is perfected. Then there's a decided fast. Eh, let me fast. That one. <laughs> and you fast and fast. Hunger hits you day one, day two, day two. Now I explained that you can start like that and consistency attracts a grace. And the Lord says, okay. Let me come in and, and meet this need. Then there's a corporate fast where the leader of a ministry says all of us need to fast. Okay? Yeah. That was a by the way. So this lady had fasted all that time and I instructed her. Now I want you to imagine from 12 years old that spirit had come every night. She's now 35. And for me what the spirit told me was tell her to fast. When she showed up in my office I asked how was the fast? She said the whole week the thing never showed up. Now this is where I need you to understand eh? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> ah, it's better than what? That you know that you can sow a seed and sow it and it's due time, it reaps. It's different when someone comes and says, by the spirit of the Lord, sow. You know when Jesus said, cast your net one more time. Obedience is better than it's a higher realm. But it doesn't make sacrifice null and void. Because sacrifice has its what? Are you with me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so, the prayer that we prayed after I met her was less than one minute. You're free. Go. Now, when people listen to someone, they say, now, I'm going through this. Something is coming to me. Let me go fast. 
you can do it by faith and a breakthrough comes or it can just be mechanical because situations are different for different people this is why revelation is extremely important knowing what to do at a particular point in time for a particular situation quickly i want to share and explain something that there are scriptures that i love abundantly they they took me through situations back in the past hebrews 13 and verse 8 It says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. This scripture of Anage took me in the past eh? that even though my situation is like this, God is the same. There's a scripture in James 1:17. He says in him there's no variation, no shadow of turning. You understand? He is perfectly the same. That means with your nonsense, with your what, he remains the same. Actually more than the scripture I've just read. The script one of the scriptures I love the most is 2 Timothy chapter 2. It says even if we are faithless he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. Actually let's read from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 11 to 13. It says this is a faithful saying. In other words he's reminding you that this statement here you can go to the bank, you can take it to the bank. You understand? You can put all your money on it. It is credible. He says for if we died with him we shall live with him now he's not referring just to the fact that he died and resurrected and so some day you'll also die and resurrect he's talking about something in terms of your practical life that if you're dead with him received him as lord and savior that the life that is living there you can live with him here on earth that's what he's saying verse 12 he says if we endure we shall also reign with him you see enduring is part of what And I know you don't like it. It is part of the Christian faith. Then he says if we deny him, he will also Hey God, God doesn't deny. Hey. <laughs> Now 13. What does it say? It says if we are faithless and there are many situations in which you and I have been faithless. The Bible says he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Now what does that mean? It means that you might have made a promise to partner and you break it. <laughs> oh, you might made a promise to God and say, and I'm just giving examples here to Lord, I'm going to build my prayer life. I'm going to pray as often as possible. One week, two weeks, you're doing well along the way. The <laughs> Bible says if we are faithless, he remains faithful. Inside you can you can bet on his side of the deal. Praise the living God. Amen. Now do you know how that thing has kept me? Kept me. I'm very burdened. You know some people who know me, whenever I teach something, I like to send a message to a few people to ask, have you learned something today? And I'm going to share with you some of the things that I think uh, are vital for you to go to the next level concerning your life. That there's a man of God called Hudson Taylor. You guys know him he was an evangelist. He used to say that if you go out if God sends you to a country where he could have sent a million missionaries but only sent you you can be sure that if you do something the way he has told you to do it he will sustain you. Because he always keeps his side of the deal. That's why a lot of the scriptures you'll find eh, promises that are given sometimes have two dimensions sometimes he says if we are faithless he remains faithful and god is always keeping his side of the bargain now even your side that is failing mercy and grace always play out now i noticed something i noticed something a couple of years back and i've said it before on, on multiple occasions that not all men are the same There are men who have walked into things that have added weight to their to their spirit given them weight in the spirit realm. The Bible says of David it's in uh I think first Samuel chapter 8 chapter 18. The Bible says that they sang of David Saul has killed 1000 or thousands. David has killed tens of thousands. Now, knowing that story David had just fought his first battle with Goliath. He had killed nobody else. Go back and read. He's just killed Goliath. The army goes wins. 
The man is coming back. Meanwhile, Saul has been fighting battles. This guy has killed one guy, Goliath. Then the ladies sing. <laughs> Saul has killed thousands. David has killed tens of thousands. If I was, if I was Saul, eh? Actually, first of all, it's not logical. The only person you've killed is Goliath. Granted, he's a big guy. But you've killed tens of thousands. Now, I looked at that scripture and there are many dimensions you can look at it. But I realized later that it's very spiritual. It was referring to the weight of David. Because later in 2 Samuel chapter 18, scripture says that David is thirsty. He's dying of thirst and his men want to go into another camp to get water. And one of the men says, for you alone are worth 10,000 men. So that means what these ladies were speaking was not just by. Can you show that scripture? Second Samuel chapter 18 verse 3. The people answered, you shall not go out. For if we flee away, they will not care about us. Nor if half of us die, will they care about us. But you are worth 10,000 of us now. One man. That means there's a weight the man carried in the spirit. Now, from the physical, is just David a king. And the Bible does not refer to any other man like this. What? 10,000 men? 10,000? Let me give you a scenario. If a guy came in with guns and said, I'm going to kill this one chap. Let's say it was David. What these people would do is they would give 10,000 people to die. For this one person's soul. So he had weight in the spirit. Scripture talks about Abraham. It says in Genesis 14 that he divided himself against them. And what happened is, long story short, they were fighting a group of people. 318 men went out and won a battle. Because Abraham divided himself. That means in that one man, now the NKJV says, give me the KJV. And he divided himself, that's what he's saying, against them. He and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. Scripture says of Moses that God took his spirit and gave it to 70. And the 70 could not stop prophesying. But Moses the entire time was just sitting with that spirit on him. Sitting with that spirit on him. Nothing they put just like a portion. The whole day you're prophesying. Because a man can carry weight. Ezekiel 14.14 14 talks about three men. Talks about Job, Daniel, Noah. It says, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. This is a deep scripture. Because it doesn't say God's righteousness. It says theirs. Eh? Eh? And imagine if righteousness, if your righteousness is, your, is like filthy rags this guy's own righteousness could deliver them. Eh? Okay, okay. We'll talk about that some other day. He says, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness. Noah, Daniel, and Job, these guys had some level of rank in the spirit. They were heavy men. Now, why is that important? I want to bring it home. There was, uh, on Wednesday, Usually I meet people on Wednesdays. That's my designated day for having meetings. Wednesday, um, I had like six, seven, eight meetings. And of those eight, only two showed up. Now we shall deal with that another day. Many of you by now know I'm very petty. Eh? The Lord is dealing with me. Eh? Just, just, eh? I'm petty. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, it's not revenge, it's pettiness. Eh? <laughs> now, I had met one person, and I'm very time conscious, so I had another meeting. Because I wanted to be true to the next meeting, I left. Now, this, uh, the reason I'm sharing this is because you can learn something. Um, when a meeting is set by God, even if the man of God tries to dodge it, it still happens. So, because these particular two people were late and I don't like tardiness eh? <sighs> I was unhappy I said let me go for my meeting let me, let, me, let me be faithful to someone 
who has set another meeting so i left when i reached there even that person sent me a message i'm late <laughs> so now uh, i need you to understand something please listen so inside me i was just like oh i just cancel meetings hmm? i just maybe i go i spend time with you lord so i i receive a call now i receive a call and lady says okay i'm sorry can we meet and the lord moves me and says okay since since this other one has delayed let me what let me meet these two now there's a lady who walked in one of the ladies she walks in i want you to understand something i was sharing with some guys yesterday it's been long since i've seen something like this she walks in and i sense a garment of freshness and i wish i could explain it to you with words but i can't i meet a lot of people very few move me the way she moved she walked in sat and one of the person she's one of them is here eh? so she will testify to that eh? she walked away left me with her friend and when she came back in the first few minutes i already said i like your friend's spirit and the entire time i was trying to figure out what is it hmm? you were coming and i was not happy what is it that has has changed my posture by force you know that thing where someone you know when you're angry with someone i'm just giving an example then they try to make you laugh and they're really funny you know? <laughs> and you know what they're saying is funny but you so in this case it was something spiritual you're trying to remain angry but it, it's it's <laughs> it's taken and i was seeing this person's life and i i wish i could explain to you that there's a difference when i'm here on the pulpit and let's say i've postured myself and by the spirit of the lord and the spirit of prophecy and the atmosphere we pick out a few people and we we minister to them when i'm in chiller mode when you find me in my chiller mode with my coffee and my what oh may the lord bless you increase you yeah yeah i i, I yeah, see yeah. Let, let's pray <laughs> but this one sat and the spirit of prophecy was available now i tried to find her until she said when i knew that we were having this meeting the entire time before it i was fasting and posturing for it eee! i was like okay this is a thing that there are things men can do that can deny evidence <laughs> remember what time i told you the mercy of god denies evidence that even when you're in the wrong you postured yourself rightly that you just find and it can happen even with jobs with what that uh, she didn't just fast because other people fast and they do it as a mechanism she did it by revelation and i was very impressed because you can know that a person did it by revelation by the garment that they're wearing it was fresh <laughs> and i very very rarely on my chiller mode <laughs> very rarely do i find people who are postured that particular way and i was okay so i said ask anything ask she will tell you i'll pick i'll see i'll see ask it was like an open book yet i can tell you when i sit with that the times i sit with people and i'm struggling <laughs> praise the lord now what is my point that there is something in the spirit called sacrifice now remember i told you obedience is better than sacrifice but it doesn't nullify sacrifice that every person that i know and that you know whether you know it or not that is in a realm of abundance and success demonic divine or carnal their sacrifice has exceeded their gifting sacrifice has exceeded gifting that a man can be gifted and another man sacrifices and we'll talk about the dimensions of sacrifice and he overtakes you with your gifting 
that any man, let's go to any sport, you go to football, Ronaldo, or you go to a Messi, or you go to basketball, you go to a, what, Michael Jordan, a person can sacrifice and people are more gifted than him, but he's either on an equal level or higher. And it cuts across everything on the face of this earth. Now, there are different dimensions of sacrifices because in the demonic world, there's sacrifice. Now, sacrifice in its true sense eh, is giving up life. Now, you can give up a portion of life in the natural. Like, Ronaldo is almost 40 years old. Always in the gym. Always working more than the other footballers who might be more talented than him. He is. But for the period of time to which he's a footballer until he retires, he has sacrificed that time. So that, that could be natural. But then there is the demonic or the divine. Now, in the demonic, blood is given at some level because the Bible says the life of every creature is in the blood. So they will cut chickens at different levels. Goats and so on and so forth because inside blood is life. So when you sacrifice it, that spirit receives that life. Okay? And that sacrifice then speaks. Then speaks on behalf of a person. And wealth will be deposited on the person. There are other levels of demonic sacrifices that I will not touch for today. Now in the divine, God says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable service, he says. Now, at every level, the highest thing you can give is yourself. In the dark, a man sells his soul to the devil. In the divine, you give your life wholly unto God. I'm getting somewhere with this. I pray you understand. And I explained to a, a guys yesterday that um, for example, in the dark world, the Bible says, honor your father and mother and you shall have long life. And so parents are, are the virtue by which you receive life and that's why there's a blessing for long life. Now, when a witch says, bring your mother, it's because the life she carries huh, or the amount of life that you've attached to her is more than you, the, what you've attached and everything else. So if you want a big thing, you need to give your life, a portion of your life. And by giving your mother, you've given a portion of your life. You understand? Everything you, you, you distribute a part of your life. Some people, it's their job. Abraham, his life had been put in his child. And God said, offer your child to me. And so the Bible says that when he put the child there, scripture says, and Abraham received his son back from the dead. How? The son didn't die. <laughs> because it's as if the son, the moment he put him there, it's like Abraham himself had put himself there. And died. You understand? So everything we give portions of our life. Why is that important? Because it is possible to put in a hundred shillings in an offertory. And it carries zero life. And in the spirit, it's not registered as a sacrifice. Because sacrifices must have life. Are you with me? Everything carries some form of life in it. And when you give it, you give a portion of that life. So a person can give, and I'm really just using offertory because it's easier to give as an example. But there are different dimensions of sacrifice, time, uh, energy, all that. A person can put in something, and it has little life in relation to the thing that they want. And it does not yield. And yet I told you that men who have entered certain realms divine, demonic, or even natural, their sacrifice must exceed their gifting. It must. It is a law. Psalms 50 verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So covenants are made by sacrifice. Now what does this mean? Now we're in a New Testament covenant. That's true. Generally you're in a New Testament covenant. But there are covenants God even today still makes with people. That is why when a man makes a promise with God, God gives his side of the bargain and you give your side. And as long as you meet your side, the promises are alive in that covenant. 
that's a personal covenant between the two. Okay? Now, when you've entered that realm and you've made a covenant with God, God establishes you in that realm. In that as long as you do not break the particular rule concerning that covenant, no matter what people do. Okay, so let me bring it down. Abraham makes a covenant with God, or God makes a covenant with Abraham, and tells him, this, 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 they have conditions. Abraham goes and lies. Another man lying would have a repercussion. But because there's a covenant establishing him at a level, as long as he hasn't broken that one, everything else does not apply. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. It doesn't, it's like a, you've entered a level and you've kept your good things. It's the same with Samson. The covenant was simple. Don't cut your hair. Samson slept with people, did what? And you know, people like to quote that scripture. If Samson had the grace, you know, and he, he will go. The thing is that eh, there are things God will allow between a relationship of two people because as the person hasn't broken the particular thing. And so they will do everything else that can bring other men down. But the person remains standing. And I tell you the truth. When I discovered that, that's when I realized, A, by virtue of a level of sacrifice that they give, I can enter a realm. God can establish me in it. And let me tell you this, and I tell you this is a true thing. That while another person is praying for a solution, I might not pray the whole year, but I'm above them. I, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you that while another one needs to fast, I might not fast, but I'm okay. And it looks unfair. Because from the top, you say, Kali, now it is. I even pray more than this person. You know, it's like that, that thing in school where someone, you, there's always that person in school who sleeps while the rest of you are reading. Then results come, number one, number two. <laughs> and God has placed a blessing upon him. It could be something that he did, a principle he tapped into, or he was born with a grace, or his parents did something, and the faithfulness flowed through. And God, like Solomon, Solomon's wealth, he says, because of my servant, David. Solomon, please understand, if you read the Old Testament, you go worship any other gods, God deals with you. There's a king called Manasseh. He annoyed God. <laughs> he annoyed God so much that even after he's dead, in scripture, God says, I still remember Manasseh. This is the God who they say, the steadfast love. You understand? Yeah, I knew every morning. But he, Manasseh is gone. And God says, even when I remember Manasseh, he's evil. It just stirs me up. That kind of anger. Huh? Solomon worships other gods and God says for the sake of David you can enjoy your wealth let another man do it and someone will quote but you see he worshipped other gods yes God was angry with him but he still kept his wealth you're forgetting that men can enter certain dimensions and that dimension protects them it protects them do you know let me tell you a deep secret 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20. It says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So what the scripture is saying here is that fellowship is not actually when you come and sit. He's saying Gentiles sacrifice to devils and by sacrificing they're having fellowship. And it's true even in the divine. Now, yes, I know. We come for fellowship. <laughs> now, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. One time, I, uh, Colossians 3.23, then I'll give this example and I'll wind up. It says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. That I learned to be very conscious that everything that I do, I do for God. Now, there's a lady I told yesterday and I said, because I've told you this, now I have to tell people in fellowship because it's unfair. Okay? He said, okay, now let me tell you this. That I have learned from a certain stage in my life that whether I was working in office or ministering here, I see myself as an employee of God. 
when I was working in government, my boss, yes, was my direct boss. But I was employed by God. And it had a time frame. And so for everything that I did, I did it with the audience of one person. God. And after I had done something and done it well, I would then demand my wage. He's more faithful than men. You understand? And so every time when I come here to minister, I've been employed for it. And so my wage should and will come. And I'm conscious of it. The problem is that you, your wage is coming from your boss. That's your problem. And the Bible says acknowledge him in all your ways. He'll make your path straight. That there is a demand you can righteously tell God. You're the one who pays me. I have done this now. This particular lady, she's sitting there. I was telling her, she has a grace to dream. A grace to dream. And in those dreams, for all the problems she has in life, it's other people showing up. <laughs> and some of the things are true and so on and so forth. And I told her that in terms of ministry and the grace God has put upon you, there's an employment there. And so you should learn to be faithful there. Meet your side. Then demand your wage. And so, I don't know if I'm helping someone, eh? that when I dream about you, I have many problems, but I dream about you. If I'm led to tell you that particular situation, I do it. If I'm not, I pray. They say, based on this grace that you've given me, my wage. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Eh? That I have never lacked because I'm conscious I'm employed by God. Not just as a man of God. In your workplace, you walk into office that day and you speak over the place that you put me here for a reason. And then you, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it as unto the Lord. You do it, expect your wage. The Bible says the expectation of the just shall not be cut off. So in the area in which God has graced you, especially if it's ministry, singing, what, whatsoever and so on, you do it to your best. Expect your wage. And when you're expectant, he is faithful to fulfill it. That's the way I deal with God all. That's the way I deal with him. That any time the teaching anointing is called upon on me, and I sit and I meet someone, and I begin to teach. I told the people who meet me every Thursday, I told them that there are times whenever the action of teaching has been ignited beyond the pulpit, that night or the next day, I am paid. I am gonna. It is a wage. And when you understand that, you start to learn, hold on, even when there are no customers, God can pay me and he will find a way because even if you're faithless, he remains. And so if he had told you then, I have called you for this and you called for this thing, and you do it to the best of your service. You are worthy. Doesn't the Bible say that every worker is worthy of their wage? But somehow you think <laughs> that because your boss is, has cut your salary, he's the one paying. Come up hither. That the, the God that I serve gives promotions. And not like men. Not like men. The Bible says he's, he's not, he shows no favoritism to men. That you apply a principle, it comes to pass. There's no way. You, you're a poet. You do your poetry. You spend nights awake. He's not blind. He sees it. You set up your thing. Few people come. It's okay. You have an audience of? That's the one you're trying to what? Hey, you, hey Rabbi, they're not liking my, my posts. They're not. Who told you? Isn't he the God of increase? Is it your boyfriend or the people who come or don't come? And so you do it. And after you've done it, you say, Lord, I've done this as unto you. Like the scriptures say, I await my wage. <laughs> I have. And you know, he doesn't delay payment. <laughs> Glory to God. Eh, doesn't delay payment. Oh. <laughs> Praise the living God. Doesn't delay payment. What is it that you're called? Understand that truth. That God is good at paying. Back. So what is your wage? 
you think that job that you got hmm? you got miraculously hmm? and god has put you somewhere and put you there for a reason light is supposed to shine in darkness that every time you enter your workplace if there are people there with curses when a person is blessed the blessing just nullifies the curse my presence here all has brought the holy ghost the father the son they're all here are you god yes i've come in the prison he lives in me god has come and he said lord now my boss has told me to do this i've done this i've been efficient in the natural even in the spiritual i've invited you into this workplace my wage i'm telling you how me and god we have i'm always conscious and so whenever i receive before i say thank you to you he's the first one the bible says do not be fooled every good and perfect gift comes from above from the father of light but the problem is that for you just looking at the people come up here there then lastly i'm going to have to end lastly time your miracle be a good student of timing it when i meet people who ask me the right questions i give the right answers if you ask the wrong question i will give you the right answer concerning your wrong question now so this lady come and that's how i am yeah? you know jesus eh? if jesus had answered something before eh? and you came and asked what he had already answered he would never answer he says i go to my father and your father and he said lord thomas show us the father i have been with you and up to now you do not doesn't answer it he says go back check the notes <laughs> Anyway, timing. So, so when it comes to timing now, these are things I've done over time and I was teaching this particular lady how to do it. So, I said, time your miracle, especially financially. Um, I wanted to buy something over the past few years whenever I wanted to get something. Um, I would always start from zero. Even though I have the money because I'm a student of the spirit. Eh? And so I want to be able to track how something works, how long it takes. So let's say, I, and I learned this unfortunately after my wedding. If I had known it before, I think, and man, that thing almost killed me, man. It was, it was just, <laughs> man, you go and the, 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 someone has assured you, I'll talk to my parents. <laughs> then you come out and so what happened? You didn't speak up. And then you come back and you think, eh. now I began to time. So. If I want something say uh give me an example say a phone let me just use that say a phone and let's say the phone is worth I don't know what 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 phones you guys buy but let me start from 3 million above eh? mm, let's not do 500 and what yeah cuz eh now let's say it's 3 million and so I start from zero and every principle aligned with calling money I will know it. Now there are different principles. There's visualization, there's sowing, there's decreeing, there are many. But I'll start out. Those is what I would do. I would start by desire. The Bible says uh, he gives you the desires of your heart. As he says, so I'd start with desire and I'll talk about it and say man I, I need a new phone. I'm believing God for a new phone. Let's say 1 million comes. I put aside that 1 million and I try to track how long it will take for me to get that 3 million. Let's say, let me help you guys. Let's say it takes 6 months for some people to get that 3 million. After I now know that without me fasting, without me sowing, I've just desired, just by pure desire, it takes 6 months for 3 million. Now, let me add a different ingredient. and i start afresh now i start afresh i see how long will it take me now if i add desire plus sowing and i started to notice the time frames would begin would begin to reduce now it reached a point now where my wife can say we need this and sometimes i'll say give me one week because i know how long it takes I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. The problem with you guys is that you celebrate and forget. <laughs> you're not a student of your miracles, eh? 
am a student of my miracles. I know now there are certain amounts of money that I'm, I'm walking into that I'm believing God for. So I told myself, I wonder how long it will take me to call this. And I'll see, let's say if it's three months. I say three months is not good enough because next time when I need it, I don't want to wait three months. Okay? So I begin to visualize. I start afresh. And this is something you can practice with just small amounts of money. Some of you, 20k comes at will. Oh, if someone could give me 20k. <laughs> and 20k comes at will. In a day, the lady I was with yesterday, today's what? Uh, it was the other day. She told me, man of God, for me 200 million comes in a day. I wanted to remove a seed. <laughs> in a day, 200, now I'm believing for 1 billion in a month. I said, good girl. That's how you go. And so I taught her, I told her, now you do this. Now that you know 200 comes in a day, identify a thing and see how long it comes. Then start adding avenues like tongues, sewing. Once you've reduced it, the law cannot be broken. It can't be broken. Be a student. Some people, life has hit them so hard. There's a guy, I'm going to say this and I finish. There's a guy, he came to me with a picture in December of a girl. He says, man of God, I really love this girl. But every time, like, I'm trying to convince her, but nothing. Nothing. Then I looked at him and I told him, you know what the Bible says, get understanding. You know what I get in get understanding. I said, now get money. And I, I told him, so that's December. So last week I told you there are guys whose finances jumped. Eh? And he's one of them. Now don't I see him coming with? And I know he's here, but he will laugh. She was in the new car, seated. The one who was refusing. I said, fear women in this world. <laughs> People don't want to struggle. Ah! Of trying, trying new car already in the front seat. Walked in, man of God, we've come to see you. Pray, <laughs> are we meant to be together? <laughs> I said, anyway, depending on how you look at it, position. Let me tell you the truth. Eh? I didn't tell you. <laughs> hey, there's a TikTok video I saw of a lady. A guy approached her and she turned and said, "If you don't have money, go away." I said, "We've reached this level now." Eh? And I looked at the comments and people were saying, at least she has told you the truth. Eh? <laughs> people don't want to hustle. You know what I eh? Now, <laughs> in the Bible there, in scripture, the toiling was given to Adam. The truth is. Eh? Huh? And women are not built to hustle. I think I should end there. <laughs> You're not built to hustle. You know what the Bible says? Some foundations have been broken. Huh? The earth is out of course. Those are one of the things that are out of course. You have your area of suffering. Huh? Though even that one, according to scripture, you, you can even speak over it and there is no child pain huh? when you're giving birth. And then it says, God spoke to the man, you shall toil. But somehow all of us have joined into the toil. <laughs> And someone, someone is saying we need equality. I also can toil. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah? So some people got the revelation. She was like, you don't have money? Now please, I'm not telling you to do that. Eh? We shall pray over your men and they shall have abundance in Jesus' name.